what's going on shout out to brian a uh, wonderful sales rep at a very reputable car dealership um, you know, timberline auto in libby montana uh, so i just wanted to make this video as somewhat of an informational video and somewhat of an inquisition uh, because you know there's a lot that is unproven uh, in this video uh, i'm not stating any of this as fact I'm stating that it's the hearsay uh, from a lot of other people um, and uh, it's something that I would like to uh, so to speak uh, take for a test drive right uh, so apparently in in theory and this is gonna sound like I'm crazy uh, I promise I'm not an insane person literally just i think best case scenario is this ends up being fact and uh, that's wonderful uh, worst case scenario is i'm wrong and that's fine i think i can emotionally handle that so uh hopefully we can get something done here uh, and test it out what i want to do is i want to go into timberline auto and i want to pick a vehicle right i want to then ask Timberline what they would want for that vehicle right if it's a $30,000 vehicle okay so I would then fill out a 1099 a acquisition of secured property tax form uh, as well as a 1099 C cancellation of debt form uh, the car dealership would then fill out a 1045 B uh, so you know Brian you might want to get your account on the phone and run this by them first um, before we make any moves but if they think hey yeah this is this might be something this guy might be onto something uh, let's let's test it out we'll fill out the tax forms we'll submit a letter of conditional acceptance and uh, sign the debt that would normally be on the customer to the national treasury uh, which would be paid via my trust fund uh, so I guess that's where it all starts, right? Like, where is this money coming from? The government isn't just going to buy you a new car. Well, apparently, uh, it, I guess the, we should start with fractional banking because that's where the money really comes from, right? Fractional banking is a nine to one rule uh, that banks follow. So for every dollar deposited into an account at the bank, the bank then has $9 increased in lending power right that's what fractional banking is the problem with fractional banking is that it literally creates money uh, which would cause inflation to just skyrocket right can you imagine if every single day inflation grew by 900 percent uh it's you know it'd be 12 trillion dollars for a cup of coffee by the end of the week so uh it's it's pretty crazy the way that they hide that or the way that they combat inflation even with fractional banking and fractional banking i mean there's there's obvious reasons that that's very beneficial for the banks uh, it's very obvious how it's not very beneficial for the consumer the united states citizen so in the 30s actually i think it was the late 20s we created the social security administration Right, and the Social Security, Social Security is a trust. It's a trust fund that you pay into uh, through taxes that you either pay through your work or if you're self-employed, you pay into it. I mean, no matter what, any income earned, you're paying Social Security tax. And that is so that you can eventually receive a payout from that trust, uh, which is like people, a lot of the times, they're like, you know like if you die if i died today my son would then get payments from the social security administration until he was 18 but i haven't paid nearly that much money into social security so where's that money coming from well there's an on ledger balance and an off ledger balance of every trust fund so this is where you kind of have to understand trust laws right i am the beneficiary of the trust which means i cannot make a decision for the trust or else i give up my rights as beneficiary i can however have 
a letter of conditional acceptance sent to the national treasury or the federal government who who is the trustee of said trust fund right uh, so you can act on their behalf and decide that it is in the best interest of the trust to receive whatever i'm applying for at the time you know vehicle in this situation is where we're going to start so are you lost yet um uh, because it's pretty easy to get lost in this idea uh, but we've established that social security administration is a trust and on every trust fund there's an on ledger and off ledger balance we hide the money from fractional banking in the off ledger balance of the trust fund which when people say the money is backed by the trust i used to think that meant oh i trust you bro like no it literally means the trust fund or social security uh, and the reason they hide it in the off ledger balance is to combat inflation so it's very possible that you have as the beneficiary you have rights to not just the on ledger balance but the off ledger balance as well which could be millions you know it's like one lady had 164 million in her off ledger balance uh the government will not tell you how much is on your off ledger balance uh it's an insane amount usually uh you know depending on how old you are so we've established where they hide the money uh to make sure that inflation doesn't go through the roof uh, and another positive thing about that is when we put money into an off-ledger balance when the government puts money into an off-ledger balance of a trust fund uh, and we say the value of, the, of our dollar is backed by the trust that means the trust fund uh, we can borrow money from other countries and use the off-ledger balance as collateral on that loan china's not going to lend us billions or trillions of dollars uh, without having some sort of security in that loan. Uh, so that's what we mean by running a fiat system, fiat trust. Uh, you know, we're literally backing it by that. Uh, now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to fill out the 1099A, fill out the 1099C, write a letter of conditional acceptance, have the car dealership fill out a 1045b i believe it is and we're going to submit those tax forms now of course there's no there's no liability to the car dealership um you know what i'm what i'm doing is i'm not trying to commit any sort of fraud uh, or anything like that uh, what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to test this out and see if the national treasury will pay that debt because it's in the best interest of the trust, uh, which is me or Trevor Sheesby. You, so like, it's, this is where it gets crazy. Um, separating yourself from yourself. Like you, you, have, you have to understand there's two Trevor Sheesby's. There's me, that's, that's me, this physical body. And then there's Trevor Sheesby, the entity, right? Um, if you look at your name on a social security card or your name on your driver's license, it's all caps. And there are only three things that will be in all caps. Um, according to the government, there's only three things. So um, one of them is a trust. So you have to look at, when I talk about what's in the best interest of the trust, I'm talking about Trevor Sheesby, the trust, the, the social security number, the government ID number. Um, so I'd like to try this out. I'd like to fill out these tax forms. I'd like to submit a letter of conditional acceptance and, uh, I'd like to see what happens. Uh, what, what could happen is the national treasury will send a check, uh, to the car dealership. Like let's say I'm trying to buy a car, right? $30,000 car. I fill out the tax forms. The National Treasury then sends a check to the car dealership 45 days later. Uh, I think it would be cool to try uh, and just see. Hey, if they send it, fantastic. Uh, if they don't, I'm wrong. Like I said, I can emotionally handle that. So, uh, obviously, 
there's still a lot to learn about this. Um, there's so many boring videos out there, uh, and they're really hard to stomach. And they're really, like, as you can tell, even me explaining it, it's very hard to follow along. Uh, I've touched the tip of the iceberg on this. Um, you know, there's people that use this to purchase houses or homes, uh, vehicles, literally any secured asset uh, or secured property is up for grabs. If you either pay for it or you have the trust to pay for it. Um, yeah, I want to use my trust fund uh, and see if that works because that would just be gangster. Um, I mean, that's a game changer right there. Uh, if you have any information about this, please let me know. If you've ever heard about this, please let me know. Um, you know, if you're a car salesman, and you want to know more about it, get a hold of me. Um, Brian will be in there next week to to chat with you about this. Obviously, like we want to run by uh, your accountant, we want to run by the the owner. You know, just to just to make sure everything is is uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say Gucci. Everything's Gucci. Uh, everything's good so uh, once we get the thumbs up from those guys uh, I say we try it out and uh, yeah like I said you know worst case scenario I'm wrong best case scenario is we we'll teach a couple people this trick uh, and let's sell all the cars on that lot you know what I'm saying uh, hope to talk to you soon uh, let me know what you think about this video and thank you guys very much